Hey guys, again, I try not to include too much typing on these things, but I wanted to have the details of each step of the mechanism here so you can pause the video and take a look at what some teachers might require of you at each of the steps. Today, SN2 mechanism, which happens mostly for primary alkyl halides. What that means is that the carbon that the leaving group is attached to is only attached to one other carbon. I say halides because the one of those common leaving groups that teachers will include is halides. I'm gonna be using iodine here. And in fact, I'm simply going to use uh, one iodopropane. So my iodine is connected to a C, which is connected to two H's. And I've got a CH2 and a CH3 coming off of that. Now, the reason we have SN2s happening for primary alkyl halides is because the OH, or rather whatever nucleophile is doing the attacking, needs to have room to attack from the backside. Some people call this mechanism the backside attack because the OH comes in from the opposite side as the iodine or leaving group is leaving from. In fact, take a look. I've drawn the double-headed arrows that we need from one of the lone pairs on my nucleophile, I'm attacking the carbon that has the leaving group on it from the opposite side. And the leaving group is leaving. The electrons from the carbon leaving group bond are going to the leaving group. It's gonna take those away. Now, here's the cool bit, or rather the difficult bit of the SN2 mechanism, is showing the transition from one iodo propane in this case to uh, propane one all where the OH is attached in place of the I. So CH3, CH2, carbon. Now I'm going to show the two hydrogens here. I'm going to show my OH group attaching from the top, and I've got a dashed line in there because it's about a half bond at this point. And I'm gonna show a dashed line here to the I. The OH is coming from the opposite side. It's starting to attach to the carbon, and the I is detaching at the exact same time. This is not a real molecule. In fact, this is actually a very high energy state. We actually call it the transition state. If I don't know if you can see that. If you know anything about uh, potential energy curves and thermodynamics. But overall it has a minus one charge. It was a neutral molecule and an OH minus attacking or combining. So we have a minus one charge flowing around here somewhere. Now it shouldn't be a surprise that the final product here will have the OH fully attached and the I completely detached. I still have my CH3, CH2, C, H, H, and OH. And here we are. We've got propan one all here, or one propanol, depending on how you want to name it. And the iodide leaving group has completely detached. Check it out. Attack from the opposite side, kick the iodine off, in the end, the OH is attached and the iodide is gone. The transition state, the highest energy point on the potential energy curve, is uh, the halfway point between those two. OH half attached and I half attached. Now, in terms of stereochemistry here, this should be, uh, I mean, the carbon connected to the two hydrogens and the CH2CH3 should remind you of a trigonal planar arrangement. If you had to name this with Vesper, it would be trigonal bipyramidal. This hydrogen is kind of going back into the paper and this hydrogen is coming out at you. Put another way, these three, the hydrogen, hydrogen, and ethyl group are all in the same plane, one hydrogen sticking out towards you, one hydrogen going back into the paper. Cool? If you're going to talk about stereochemistry, optical isomers, chiral centers, that kind of thing, because the iodine left from one side and the OH attacked from the other side, 
Usually, and I say usually because it depends on the priority of these other groups, usually you'll have an inversion of the stereochemistry. R centers become S centers, uh, dextrorotary becomes levorotary, stuff like that. But again, that's uh, I, that's not a hard and fast rule, so I probably shouldn't have even said that. But the stereochemistry does invert. Oh, I thought my camera was freezing. I thought I was going to lose that whole video. Anyways, pause the video when you get a chance and record all of these things. Make sure you include all of the stuff that I ask you to, like the OH attacking from the opposite side, the 3D structure on the central carbon. And the last thing I want to point out is that it's an SN2 mechanism because it's a bimolecular first step. The slowest step in the mechanism, the only step in the mechanism, is OH attacking the, in this case, alkyl halide. If you had to create a rate law for this, rate equals K alkyl halide times the nucleophile concentration, the overall order here is 1 plus 1. That's where we get the 2 for SN2. It is a bimolecular slowest rate determining step, even though there's only one hump in the potential energy curve. Don't get it twisted, all right? That's SN2. Compare it to SN1. Do your thing. Be an organic chemist and best of luck.